Now, online, the statistics are saying that slavery never ended. They just put lipstick on it. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You can't make this stuff up. Jeez, golly. <laughs> Man, we're about to get into uh, this uh, reparations bill here in California where they're talking about in legislation of wiping black people's debt of, um, you know, of, of child support away. You know, it, it's something to really be concerned with and really talk to and, and kind of really go back and forth with and see exactly what they're actually talking about. That's what this show is going to be about. We're going to unpack it. And all of you uh, people that uh, don't like talking about sensitive subjects, you really need to open up an eye because, mm, well, it's just your life. You don't have to care about it. I know you vengeful baby mamas and vengeful baby daddies out there. I know you're like, oh, I'm sticking it to her. Uh, you know, I get revenge through the system. And not only revenge of not seeing my baby. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you for joining us. We are the real people of the Internet, as you most definitely can see. My name is X, and this is my co-host. Z. Z. What's going on, Z? How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. How are you, X? I'm doing well, man. Can you see if you can turn your mic around a little bit? Because it's it's not picking you up. Oh, okay. Oh, that's oh perfect, my God. Z. Oh. There I am. I was looking for myself. I was looking for you, too. Man. I was kind of yeah. sad, you know? Aww. Oh, okay. So now that me and Z got our, our life together and things that are going on, man, let's see if we can get your life together and really point to a, a, a situation of what's going on out there in legislation so we can actually break this down. You know, this this is not a racist bill, you know? <laughs> Wiping black people's child child support debt away. You know, a lot of people they're they're saying, you know, what well, how come you can't um how come you can't just pay your child support? You know, um uh uh, uh, uh you, you know, why why is this big thing? Why don't you just get a job? You know, let, let, let's just, just get a job, you know? What, what what else are they saying online uh z um well a lot of people on both sides both men and women are saying that it is economic slavery and it's a tool used to uh oppress people that have been oppressed for a really long time so yeah there's kind of people on both sides of the fence what are they saying like personally what are the women saying about you know the uh um you know uh he he he's not paying child support you know it's kind of like a moral thing that's going on where they're uh villainizing they're men virtue so signaling there's a lot of women that are virtually signaling saying you know that their men are deadbeat dads and that they uh, deserve to pay it and why you know why are you having children and you're not wanting to support them but I believe that's very one-sided, right? It's almost like you have an ex-boyfriend and you're mad at him, so you're going to talk crap even though, uh, talk crap about him to all your girlfriends, even though, you know, he, he did probably some right and some wrong. He did some good and some bad, but you're just going to paint it all bad. That's, we all know that relationships don't always crumble right down the middle where the man just walks away and the, the poor victim is left with the kids. That's not always how it works. A lot of times women are the ones to leave the relationship, keep the man out and withhold the child from being able to even see him. So it's men out there paying child support, haven't seen their child in years. In years, man. So it's not a one-sided issue. I'm really tired of it being a one-sided issue. And also there's women that are on child support. I know it's always like, a, oh, deadbeat dad thing. There's a lot of women that are actually on child support because the father ends up getting custody and they're on child support. Yeah. So Lord, this I'm affects mercy. them too. There's a lot of women. I know it traditionally, historically, it was a men's well, can, issue, well, but can, there's women on child support. Well, I can see now that it's really facing towards the women and you women. I, I tell you, you better get out there and do something because they've been giving you more of the jobs lately. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of women so, that are actually abandoning their um, parental their rights parental to the rights. to the man, especially when the kids get a little older, 11, 12, they're acting up, they're now as tall as her, she yeah. can't handle them anymore, it goes to the dad, and guess what the dad does then? 
goes to the court, says, I'm now primary custodian. I'm going to put her butt on child support. So it's a lot of women that are now on child support. So Yeah, so women, man, this is most definitely a red flag to you. I know for many years, since the 70s, since this this child support thing has come up, I know for years, you know, there's generations of people that have have been raised off of child support. And, um, you know, I know for years, you're just like, you you know, if you get in a failed relationship, uh, you know, you can most definitely get revenge, not only by not allowing the father or you know to see the child, but you can also get financial revenge by the rule of law that is set in av- predatory towards the man. And so you can get retribution, not only morally by people saying that he's a Debbie bad, uh, you know, you can also get support from the banking or the financial system here that allows you there to be some kind of retribution and revenge just because you had a failed relationship. Yeah. It's like the government is monetizing the weaponization of a breakup. Yeah. I, 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 I don't necessarily know if it's the government. I, I, I really put it on the rule of law. You know what I mean? Well, who and makes the law? Yeah, but listen. I guess lawmakers. Lawmakers. You, you got to say the lawmakers, yeah. baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lawmakers. Yeah, it's not GOV. GOV is sitting out here, just sitting back here, you know, um, not part and partial of right, anything. Right, They're just they impartial are, observers. Yeah, they are the sovereign king of it all. You know what I mean? <laughs> they really are. So that's why I say I don't want to get into the whole, uh, you know, pushing the GOV down. No, it's not about GOV. It's really about those lawmakers that have the disconnect that are putting out these these moral laws that are have that that are putting out these moral laws. And I say it's more of a moral law because, you know, a lot of a lot of our systems are ran by nonprofit organizations. You know, what I mean, and those nonprofit organizations are set up like a 501 C three, two, you know, what I mean, I mean, it, it's just common knowledge. It, it, this is not a you know, this in 501c3 two, if those are most definitely uh, structures of how you set up a church or a religious organization. So there is most definitely people that are in there that are shaping or have shaped the law to be to to most definitely be profit over people in this case. And in this case, the people that fall out of line are the kids, you know, what I mean, that's the sad part. The sad part is that the the, the kids, the kids are suffering uh, as these failed relationships are wedged in between, right? And not only are they failed relationships from uh, from societal standpoint, moral standpoint, but there's also failed relationships because you create backpack kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and, and generation of backpack kids. If you don't know that. First, before the backpack kid was the latchkey kid. That's basically your parent or your mom or your guardian uh, not being able to watch you. They had to go to work, right? And then not being able to raise their kid that they had. So they usually passed it on to, uh, first they passed it on to like a neighbor or something in in the community. And then it ultimately ended up being like your grandmother, you know, a aunt or something, but usually it was like your grandmother or grandfather, you know? So, so, so a lot of, so a lot of people were raised by their grandparents, you know, through this latchkey kind of generation, you know, but now, but now we have, um, you know, so, so child support, if you were raised by parents or grandparents, child support wasn't needed, but until the grandparents started saying, hold up, I raised my kids now in the 1970s. Now we need to start to have some retribution of you know for these kids and 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 it's funny that uh societal has brought this as a moral a moral law and the majority of people that are bringing moral laws are religious people you know what i mean and so these religious people what they do they get into their collectives Mm -hmm. and they demoralize the men for you know at church or at the mosque they they tell them oh oh you ain't paying your child support you're Mm -hmm. oh you know you're no good yeah you know, so they, they start these stereotypes and these slogans yeah. that like deadbeat dad, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, what is a deadbeat it's dad? It's like they're defaming you know? them. Villainizing it. And, and, and at the end of the day, uh, the lawmakers come in and they most definitely put that wedge between a gender wedge between men and women 
uh, fighting for custody. You know, anybody that's going through a, um, a custody battle, most definitely that's like the, the war of the Titans, so to say. You know, nobody wants... Anyone is going through that system, regardless if you won or didn't, they you know that it was brutal and it did not serve the kid, the mother, or the father. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody's coming out of those custody battles like, oh man, we won out of this. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> so, but you, you know, but this leaves it hands for the adults to start to take a hand. And that's that's where this show comes in, you know. So let's kind of get into this reparations um, deal so we can see exactly who this is affecting and why. Okay, great. You have okay. So California Reparations Task Force calls for elimination of child support debt for black residents because the nation's laws, they're saying, have torn apart African-American families for a long time now. So they released a historic 1,100-page report last week that could amount to hundreds of billions of dollars in payments. Wow. The report revealed that the state's black residents represent a larger percentage of those who owe child support debt than their proportion of the state's population. So, okay, let, 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 let's work that down. What does that mean? Okay, so let's say, for example, let's say there's a room, right? And it has 10 people in it. Okay. And only two of those people are African-American. Mm. And both of those African Americans in that group of 10 people owe child support. And yet the other eight people from various groups, maybe Asian, maybe Caucasian, maybe Hispanic, whatever the case may be. Okay. Only one person from the entire rest of the group owes child support. Okay. So it's disproportionate. It's upside down. Mm -hmm. So for the, let's say like, I'm just, the report doesn't say how much, what the percentages are, but let's just say, for example, African Americans represent 13% of the population in California, yet like 90% of them owe child support. Lord. Something that's like super disproportionate. I don't see the Lord facts and the mercy. figures here, so I'm not quoting that fact okay. or figure. But, but, I'm just yeah. giving you an illustration of what that phrase means. Okay. Thank you, Z. I really appreciate that. I mean, you do a wonderful job with those things, by the way. Thanks. I really appreciate that. So, okay, so it's, so it's highly disproportionate. Okay, is there anything else about this? Um, respiration task for you know yeah. what they're saying how they're saying it yep thanks for asking um so they called on the state legislature in california to end child support debt for black residents claiming that the nation's laws has hindered the growth and torn apart african-american families mm. they released the um they released a report that so, showed oh, two years worth of research that they did lord two years get let's give a hand clap up for them um but but i don't want to glance over the tore up Part because I, I think people, you know, we're we go to the humane society for our dogs and, and, and we're passionate about our animals, but we're not passionate enough about humans, you know mm. what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, so what does that mean to have a toward up family financially? Since we've used the, the model for capitalism, uh, capitalism is very much, uh, you know, the god that sits, the elephant that sits in the room. So, so what does that mean to have a toward up family? I think financially, we have to understand that there are financially disabled people that exist. Wow. And usually those financially, able, dis, uh, financially uh, disabled people are children. You know what I mean? Like, first thing, let's just say it how it is. You know, that they most definitely are children. Uh, but those children come from a family, you know, a family that most definitely is impoverished. You know, uh, so that we can basically say that a lot of people that are using these welfare uh, programs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, these loan welfare programs right. that are created by the federal government, they most definitely are impoverished, right. you know, um, yeah. and they're trying to uh, get a way out of poverty using right. the children, you know. It's almost like loan sharking to the most vulnerable demographic of society. No. So the mom goes in and says, I need food stamps. And they say, sure, honey, sign here. By the way, who's the dad? Oh, John Doe is the dad. Great. Um, you know, this this doesn't come from nowhere. These food stamps don't come from nowhere. It's right. going to have to come from him. We're going to put him on child support. Go ahead. I don't care. He left. Lord, Or, or we broke up. I don't care. So first of all, one person is accepting aid and then someone else is getting billed for it. Yeah. And... I'm assuming the dad is not a multimillionaire. I'm assuming the dad is in the same or similar socioeconomic status. Correct. So you're basically 
taxing and penalizing and deferring a loan onto someone else who's in the same status as the person going to ask for help. What sense and does that make? them for it. <laughs> Lord, have it's mercy. It's crazy. That... I knew someone who was on unemployment, like literally lost their job because of CV-19, mm. and they were garnishing his tiny EDD payment. Lord, have I mercy. Mean, I mean, tiny EDD payment. And yes. They were garnishing it. They're garnishing it, but but that that shows for that this is a financial issue, yeah. and that, so we got to look at the banking system. We got to look at who have put these laws basically in place to 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 represent this. Now, do you think that this is a way to kind of like get at men, so to say? Is this is this like another man hating law? You think what? Where do you think laws like this come from? You know, I think it comes from bad business practices we always hear about business ethics and good faith business practices this the way the child support system is set up i don't know if you guys have like intimate knowledge of how it's set up probably not but they receive uh, the the local child support agencies and the state receives federal matching dollars so let's say okay. they bill someone three dollars for child support mm. and they pay that out in food stamps or whatever let's just say three dollars they get two out of those three dollars back from the federal government oh really it's a grant what so, so, so it's more like a loan oh, grant right it's, it's yeah a, it's a grant so okay. so let's say i'm child support and you're a father or a mother Right. So then I will I bill you the three dollars that you owe for some of the aid that I gave to the custodial parent. Yeah. And I let the federal government know, hey, I gave John Doe three dollars and the federal government says, OK, here's a grant. Here's two dollars back. Right. So technically, John Doe only owes one dollar, right, right, but he's right, getting right. billed for three dollars plus 10 percent. Right. So not only is child support agencies getting money two out of three dollars back as a grant from the federal government. So that debt is three fourths of the way already paid before it even gets billed to somebody. Wow. But they're also billing the dad or the mom who's on child support and also with a 10% tax on top of it. Oh, so it's, it's like interest. an interest. Oh, shoot. So they're double dipping. They're getting it back from the government. They're giving aid to a, a custodial parent and their child in need. And then they're also billing the non-custodial parent with interest on top. Why would they want to do good business ethics? Because they're not, obviously not an ethical corporation or entity yeah. because they're getting money. Their bread is being buttered on yeah. both sides. It's being, and, and, and that's most definitely, that's most definitely, you know, opinion, you know, uh, it, at the end of the day, you know, um, uh, it, this is entertainment purposes only. And we most definitely are coming at y'all. You know, the people who set this up, you can just look at this as being a roast, okay? We're we're just roasting you, you know what I mean? This is not a way of like a mental or psychological attack. This is not even like, uh, you know, trying to like, you know, um, Martin Luther King, everybody. You know, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> step back, man, right? step back. But y'all most definitely got to be roasted, man, because I think a lot of people that have come up with laws like this, there is a disconnect, you know? and there's a societal disconnect and it seems punitive or um uh it seems very predatory towards yeah, men yes. and, and specifically when, when we're talking about reparations black men mm, right it, but all to all men this is happening to you know um to all men this is kind of going on i think the majority of people that are on child support are actually uh caucasian men you know right so so but but as we look at as we start to unpack more and more about these she said that it was a grant um but online uh it's tied it seems to be tied child support seems to be tied to the social, social security, security yeah. but it's also a um a loan a prepaid mm -hmm. loan right. by that right by that matter it, it, and you can go look all this stuff up. It's right there. It's all a prepaid loan. And this prepaid loan is, uh, you know, is used. That's why, you know, if you go to jail, the loan, it's a uh, it's a revolving loan account right, that right. constantly hits your credit, you know? Yeah. And that's another thing. Have you read anything about how people's, how men or women's that are paying child support, if they miss a payment, how their credit is impacted? Oh, they're slammed. So... Not only does it get on your credit, but it's reported every single month. Mm. And so the amount just keeps getting bigger and bigger, which is really sad because if you think about it, 
it said in that report that people that did owe child support, whether it's a man or a woman, because I do want to reiterate, women are on child support too. So let's say the non-custodial parent has a lower income than the typical California worker, meaning they're either underemployed or unemployed and struggling. Mm. And so to also put it on their credit when they're probably desperately looking for a job. And guess what they do? What do employers do? They do a background Background check check. and included in the background check is a credit Credit check check. so you're literally kicking somebody when they're down and they it's like the more behind you get the less likely you are to get a job less likely you are to get a job the more you fall behind it's like a vicious cycle and i do want to say hold on yes you can you hold it right there because you you said something about finances Mm -hmm. uh getting a job because a lot of people would say uh, oh, won't you just get a job and pay and, yeah. and just pay your pay your child support? Because nobody will but, hire you. But nobody, if your credit is destroyed, nobody will hire you right. to 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 actually um, work for that. To work for them because your credit is actually bad. Now the employers most definitely from um, you know unemployment will most definitely speak out and say, what will they say? They say, oh no, that's discriminatory. No no job will ever do that. Yeah, you know? they literally but, check your credit. But they do check your credit and it's proprietary if a company tells you or not. So there's a secret, secret right. underline right. that's actually going on where it's not being spoken about how many employers are most definitely discriminating against people that have bad, messed up credit, usually if you come from jail or or if you're in something like a debt prison. Right. So, so they're positioning or the lawmakers are positioning themselves uh not providing jobs for for right. these um right. for these uh for these people that are paying child support. Non-custodial parents, right? So and not giving them a job and then give, putting it on their credit. And then in some states they actually jail them. Which is illegal uh, because debt prison should be illegal. It's unconstitutional. Right. So that shouldn't even be taking place. Yeah, they actually jail them because they're not paying. And some people have yeah. to pay like yeah. this dowry tax. Exactly. You know, when they're in jail in order to actually get out. I've heard that yeah. people have been in jail for six months to a year, unfortunately, yes. yeah. in, in a situation situation like this so you know this talk is 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 getting involved with what's going on Mm -hmm. you know this is getting involved because there's there's two sides to every coin just like my you know just like uh um uh my my good man uh lincoln you know Mm -hmm. yeah abraham lincoln there's it's two sides to every coin and we are in a lincoln stage Mm -hmm. because as you can see lincoln's pointed to the to the east and all the rest of his other his cronies mm-hmm. are pointed to the left right, you know they turn like, their backs on him hey i want to mention yeah. that 27 percent, and this is coming straight from the department of child services okay great 27 percent of owed child support money is just an unpaid state interest so what does that mean so let me tell you what that means okay. I'm, I'm glad you asked thanks i'm tired of hearing oh but those poor children those deadbeat moms and those deadbeat dads they're not giving the child any money and resource that's not what it is Wake up. the the custodial parent went in and got welfare food stamps medical medicaid health right. insurance they got quote unquote free services which aren't free and they then bill the non-custodial parent for those services being rendered yeah because that money doesn't come from the sky so essentially this person is getting services and we're going to give you the bill for it but this is the problem not only are they giving the non-custodial parent the bill for it it's interest 27 percent of the money that's owed so if it's so if it's a thousand dollars that's owed 270 dollars is just interest Lord it's not mercy. going to the child it's not making that child's life better that money isn't going to the pocket of that child to buy them mm. crayons and pencils and school books and rainbows mm. and unicorns it's interest because it's a loan, loan that the other person didn't agree to i know situations where 
the father or the mother, whoever has the child goes and gets those services without even consulting the other parent, without the agency even reaching out to the other parent and doing due diligence and saying, hey, XYZ just came in and they're asking for services. Are you able to, do you have a job that has health insurance that you could put your baby on your health insurance? Are you able to provide this person with two, right. $300 a month or should we go ahead and put them on this and then work out a payment arrangement with you? There's no conversation. Imagine there's, no, there's not imagine getting a, a a credit card bill in the mail. OK. And you never signed up for the credit card. You had no knowledge of the credit card. But your girlfriend bought a fur coat and did her nails and her hair and you get the bill for it. And you're like, what the hell? This credit card is in my name. I don't know anything about this. I didn't sign up for this. And I sure didn't go get a mink coat and get my nails done. What is this? It's like. It feels so illegal, like it, the it, way that they're just pushing these loans through. Yeah, the way they are. And I know, I know I've heard of, uh, just by the grapevine, just of certain people using these child support loans uh, that are, are beneficiaries of it, not serving the child, but most definitely mm -hmm. going to Mexico and getting like a tummy tuck. Yeah. You know, they're, they're right. It, you know, we would say that this is a fraudulent way of doing it. And yeah. there's kind in law, you would say there's a, a sliding scale, mm -hmm. right? And that sliding scale, if you do, if you're into bad behavior, you know, um, uh, that bad behavior ultimately will fall, will, will fall, will follow you as you go along in your life. But unfortunately, uh, people that are taking money to misuse it, uh, and, and, you know, uh, putting these men kind of like in a punitive, uh, uh, moral, uh, deadbeat dad area, you know what I mean? <laughs> They're using the beneficiaries of these loans are using to get back at the dad because of the failed relationship. Does that, yeah. does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So, so, so with that said, you know, uh, um, you, you know, if you depending on who you have a relationship with, you know, uh, you're going to be on this prepaid loan kind of thing, uh, for, um, for 18 years. What is the name of this, of this loan? So to say, what's the name of this? Um, title 4D. Title 4D. Okay. Yeah, it's Title 4D. It's called the Title 4D. Yeah. Um, and, and then the name of the bill that the um, Reparations Committee is putting before the Assembly, they actually, the Reparations Task Force, Task Force met in May in, in Oakland and held a meeting um, for audience members to teach them about Assembly Bill 3121, okay. which is the bill to say that um, reparations should go to eliminate any back child support for black residents right and, and, and i want people to not look at this as like a racist bill we need to start to look at the collective because if it starts here with black people it's probably going to go all around the united states let's start to look at it like hey we're starting here and let's 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 start to reform everything about these bills so we so so they can most definitely you know, service the kid, you know, service the kid and, and get these people that are beneficiaries, these adults that are beneficiaries misusing these funds and as a as a um, as a way to, uh, you know, to revenge on a guy or as a way to just do inappropriate activity. I think one thing that they most definitely can add into this to stop some of this fraudulent activity from the from the from the people that are getting these loans is having you know these professionals come through like psychiatrists you know having uh psychologists and not just having them to assess to assess oh um uh you know uh you know, like an accountant you know they'll they'll have they'll have an accountant that has a psych uh child psychology degree and they'll be sitting there uh say asking the woman and asking the woman there uh uh we, you know when last time you saw him when last time you saw the dude that you're putting on child support or how's the kid doing they'll they'll ask them just like a welfare check right but they won't get into the psychology of what's actually going on. So there needs to be a, a psychiatrist, psychologist right, right. involved in, so they can start to spot out uh, um, fraudulent uh, get back behavior, mm -hmm. bad behavior from the from the adult, mm -hmm. that man or woman that are, pro, that are receiving these child support funds. Because a lot of these people most definitely have narcissistic, uh, you know, and I'm just quoting it, narcissistic behavior that leads to, you know, uh, bipolar, that leads to a lot of behavioral issues 
dealing with money that lead people to doing fraudulent things such as like pop people that are in poverty right you know um you know if you if you're if you're working for xerox you know you're a lady working for xerox and your and your and your husband is working for ibm i doubt if you're taking this child support you know what i mean yeah i just doubt it so um also let's get into how many men are actually uh uh let, let's start to isolate this this issue because we need to see how many men are actually uh are are being um uh how many men are actually being aggressively addressed by these child support? So I think I read something that it said that it's $115 billion uh, mm. owed by back paid child support. Yeah, yeah. Only 18% okay. of people on child support are making regular payments. The other 82% are unable to. They're, so 82% are unable to make that child support right. payment. Okay, so... If we're going to talk about deadbeats, deadbeat dads, that's basically the whole damn population. Right. That's the the same dude that you're sharing sloppy thirds with Sharon down the street. Yeah. The same the same dude, he's got three or four kids that you don't know about, man. And you need him not to just just wander around like a dog. You need him to actually be responsible. But being responsible doesn't mean him going out to work and getting um uh, and getting most definitely um getting hurt uh financially by this. It's literally manning up. And manning up doesn't mean here I can pay a bill. I think we need to get that straight. Right. You know, we come uh, African people, Africanized people, they come from backgrounds where there's pat uh rites of passage in our communities. You know what I mean? And these rites of passage gear men up to being uh, men in society. So we need to start to implement or what one suggestion for a solution is we need to start to implement uh, the responsibility men's uh, fraternal responsibility to the family and what that means and start implementing uh, his, his internal responsibility to the family so he most definitely can understand and take a part of his children's lives, his his girlfriend or his wives that he's had these children with. And so it won't just be like, you know, the mob comes through with the lawmakers and like, hey, you're going to pay. Right. You know, so another research study says um, says that over 60 percent of young men are currently single uh, sexual intimacy at at uh 30 years uh 30 times low across all genders so uh what does that mean that means that uh men aren't having uh sexual relationships anymore and uh it's uh 60 percent of them are reporting men like to lie too as well so it, <laughs> when they're but doing do their think studies i think it's i think it's higher you know what i mean mm -hmm. men will lie on their di Right. Oh, oh my God. Men, men will lie. So I think it's higher. I think it's more of like 80%. You know what I mean? I, I really think it's like 80%. And I think there's a small amount of men that are having these children that are on child support that have more than one child. Mm -hmm. And they, those are the alpha men or beta men that have alpha tendencies that are most definitely showing up and being penalized financially for for you know for this well yeah. so we got to think about what happens to the credit real quick what happens to the credit for a man while he's on child support your credit you, they say cash is king y'all but cash is not king we are we are part of capitalism and we love that digital dollar if you mess up your credit, the credit is destroyed and you miss those payments. I don't care if you was uh, broke or or you got in an accident or or whatever case happened. Uh, uh, it happened and it, and it most definitely showed up. I don't care what happened, but it happened. Right. We got to start to see most definitely that there's an issue with uh, credit. That means you can't get. Uh, a job, right? You can't get a right. job. You can't an uh, get, a, get an apartment. You can't get an apartment. Uh, that means that uh, if you don't have a job or don't have an apartment, you're probably living with a family member or something, right? Right? Mm -hmm. 
Hopefully. Okay. You live in. Not a, you're out on the street. Or you're out on the street. If you don't have any family, can't get a you've car. been an orphan. You're living with a friend. Yeah. You're living can't. in your car. Or right? you or it's you just, can't get a car. If you get a job, how are you going to get back and forth every day? Right. So you could pay that child support. Right. You can't even get credit to get a car. So we got. You can't get a car loan. Right. You can't get a car loan. Um. So when we look at those men that are out there homeless in your cities, you got to think why they're homeless, even though they couldn't put the connection between each other. You got to think why they are homeless. Maybe it's due to child support. Yeah. You know, so, you know, as we have a moral issue and a moral uh, villainization of our men go down, we got to start to really put the mirror up at ourselves and start to unpack what this actually means for society. Honey, I know you got hurt. You know what I mean? Like, I know you got hurt. I know it's not right. I know I know they told you that Barbie and Ken and all these Disney movies that are morbid in itself, you know, Beauty and the Beast itself, you know what I mean? That shit is morbid. I know they told you that the reality that you're living is crazy and and, and that you you wanted a monogamous relationship with this guy but nothing about him says monogamy you know what i mean he's hiding all these girls he's hiding all this stuff that he's doing you breaking up relationships this failed relationships i get it man but when that failed relationship goes and you have you have a daughter or a son and that son can't be around your daughter or that son can't be around his father. That daughter can't be around his father. You're creating bad behavior, baby. <laughs> for the rest of society. And the moral mirror is not up. That's why I say the rule of law is before us all. And what is the rule of law? I may say the rule of law is an adherence of the law that helps to preserve the rights of all people in a democratic society. The operative words being the rights of all people as a reflection in the Declaration of Independence, okay, and in the Constitution. And it is, it is most definitely um, immortal words of Abraham Lincoln at the Gettysburg Address. You know, this rule of law, man, these people that are most definitely crafting it. You know, I, I, I know capitalism gets into profit over people. I get it. You don't want people to have homes. You want people to be in tenements. You want them to be in, um, in uh, you know, apartments and, and in little square, square houses, right? I, I, I get it. You know, because you can control the resources in, in an apartment building and don't, the land you don't want them to get the land because the land got wealth to it. You want them to be in a little square house. Okay? And in that square house, you show up and uh, the person doesn't own anything. They're just basically a worker bee. But the rule of law most definitely has to be obscene when we're talking about this child support issue and what it's what the devastating effects that it's doing to the black community, that it's doing to the white community, that it's doing to the European community, African community. Oh, and that's also, don't be no foreigner coming over here thinking you gonna have no baby. <laughs> when you get naturalized, you gonna have a social security number or some kind of number, and they gonna tie that to most definitely child support and social security, you ain't gonna have no money. <laughs> so we we got to start to unpack some of these things that we're doing as a society and and you know we're pushing you know we we most definitely are pushing for uh, uh child support reform you know <laughs> we're most definitely pushing for it there has to be some kind of reform because i like to say that moving forward we have some of the greatest minds here in the united states i don't i don't care what nobody says we got the greatest minds on the planet on the planet they are right here next to us and those greatest minds can come up with a better story a better way for the federal government to make money off of this a better way for the child and the families not to be destroyed a better way for the men not to go into debt prison or to be put in jail for not paying a child support bill You know, there was reports 
online that people were actually um that people were actually paying uh child support up into the up into the third up until the uh the child is uh 20s and into their 30s and they're and they're sitting up here paying paying child support i'm gonna I'm show y'all one 30s yeah up it until, ended at 18. no it does end at 18. <laughs> But they're paying, they're still having to pay it because oh, that the loan, back, the arrears, the back, yeah, child the, support. And, and, and this is some of the stuff that goes online. We'll just read it for you. It says, please uh, explain how it's not because of lack of payment, it's because of the effect of uh, Title IV. That's why uh, there's so much push. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Tennessee chat support, uh, and, you know, child support, help me out. People are saying they will only do it to the man and not to the woman. This is this is what they're saying online. Okay, here, here, uh, here. I'm gonna give you some more. This is what we're saying online. So, so because we need to move out of this whole conspiracy theory that this is what American citizens are saying about child support. Okay, boom. Let let let's get it again. This is what they're saying online. Let's get it again. It says. Don't they take you to jail for contempt? It's not debt. How does all of this work for California since, you know, operate since they operate differently? They used to do that here. I've heard of people getting sent to prison for a year and a day, but don't think they'll, you know, they'll do that anymore. You know, OK, come on, I'm going to say one more. I'm going to put one more out there for y'all to most definitely see and see what people are out here saying. It says in this one, I'm not even working. No. And they keep sending monthly payments that they want. You, you hear they keep sending the pay. The payments are, are recurring. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a recurring revolving loan. that's already prepaid. This is what people are saying. Can you go into detail, please? My daughter is now in her late 20s, early 30s, and I'm still paying for back pay and regular payments. Do I have to pay? These are American citizens, man. These are Americans that are suffering from the system that, that is before them. We can make it better for them. We can make it better. We got to try to see if we can make this better, man. I know the greatest minds out there most definitely can make it better. I know we can we can create systems of harmony instead of systems of dif disharmony. You know what I mean? You know, all can be forgotten. You know, all of all of the drama and the things behind these child support issues can be forgotten if you just allow the the new booties to come up there and and reform this thing. You got to do it with the psychologist. You got to do it with the psychologist, and you and you and you got to be there and you got to do it. If you do it with them, you'll most definitely have a road or a path to success with you know this whole child support thing. What do you think, Z? Yeah, I agree. Okay, y'all, we're about to get out of here. This is the real people of the internet. My name is X, and this is Z. Hi, guys. And we're we're out of here, Audi Five Thousand. But before we go, I just want to let you know, people out there, never give up. This is your time to shine. God is with you. God is on you. God is all around you. The angels of God may they be with you. And all of the children out there that are suffering from all these failed relationships, may you have peace love and harmony and may the adults be able to get this ish right we're gonna get it right for y'all we love y'all we're gonna get it right for y'all and we we're gonna we're gonna be in the boardroom we're not gonna be doing all this uh interest on loans that we, we we're not gonna do that we're gonna set y'all up for success in the future and however that success looks hey granddaddy granddaddy biden granddaddy trump granddaddy obama the granddaddies, they're going to get it right for y'all. And we're going to all get it right. All in Congress, they're going to get it right. <laughs> Diane Feinstein. <laughs> Waters. <laughs> Who else, see? I say you named everybody. Uh, oh, Lord. 
we're going to get it right, but we need to get it right so you can unpack it. We got to get it right. Uh, and the men got to stop being villainized here, man, because those men that you villainize and that you uh, encapsulate, they're disabled financially. They're like a, a they're like a, they're, there's disabled, either you're going to disable the child financially or you're going to disable the adult financially. When you do that, it, it, it's no way that we're all going to win, baby. It's no way. So hopefully you're able to find it in your heart and connect back to the God in you, the lawmakers that are creating it. And hopefully you're able to find back and, and come back to some God centered law, all law, rule of law, which is all law. Come back to it and find, find your peace and get, and get that wings of my eye. You know, that lady Liberty is, is associated with the wings of my eye from ancient Egypt. That lady, lady Liberty is most definitely a representation of justice. You know, may you all men and women be able to fly like the hawk up in the sky, the Haru and fly like lady justice and be justice all around and all across for us all, because we need you. If you're going to pass moral laws, we need you to be moral and you need to open up and look at the mirror that's before you so you can do what's right for all of humanity. Save all of humanity. Just don't let us go down. We love you. We care for you. And we're going to be there for you. Peace. Out of 5,000. X, X, X. Elon Musk.